Now, if you are chasing the yield curve on the market, let's have a bit of a broader conversation if you're interested, interested in the new corporate bond funding program announced just yesterday evening by the Central Bank of Nigeria with the guidelines now on the street. We're trying to unpack that. Let's uh, uh, stick with the stock exchange, our studios live from there. Bod Lahan, I know, who is the head of investment at Contrast Capital, is joining us for this conversation this morning. Uh, good morning, Bod Lahan. Chase the youth curve for us. Based on what Tempo has just said about where we are in terms of the bullish uh, finishing on Thursday for both Treasury bills and Naira bond. Okay, thank you very much, Boston. Um, rightly said, uh, we saw a lot of bullish sentiment in the market yesterday. And of course, you notice the um, yield has been high in the past couple of months. We've seen sell off by foreign portfolio investors. And it's quite a lot of things. One, the EM sentiment that we've seen also has impacted our market as well. Also, the political risk as well cannot be taken away from what has affected the market. So we've seen yields um, in chop in the past couple of months. And of course, we saw renewed interest yesterday. And um, that's why we saw a lot of bullish sentiment yesterday. And we saw contraction across the yield curve. If you recall as well, if you look at last auction for the um, bond auction last week, um, all the tenors, which were all reopenings, they all inch up as well. So for instance, for the 2023, the um, last auction stop rate was at 14.39%. Prior to that, it was at 13.69. For the 2025 bond, it closed at 14.6%, as opposed to 14% the prior month, while the 2028 bond closed at 14.69% as opposed to 14.3 the pre previous month. So we've seen a rally in the past couple of months, and of course, we wasn't surprised to see re-entry or renewed interest by a lot of investors yesterday. So we expect this trend to go on in the, past, uh, uh, in the next couple of months as well, as investors begin to book um, their place for attractive yield. Uh, we expect PFS as well to take advantage of this attractive yield as well, and also insurance companies to take advantage of the attractive yield we've seen in the fixed income space. Income and data, economic data, seem to be a major driver for fixed income market anywhere in the world because these are what you call the git edge or what you call the guilt in any market or you call it the bond or you call it fixed income, whatever it is, because they're closely tied to the activities of the government borrowing for whatever reasons from investors and the market. Absolutely, you are right, um, Boston. So for anybody to want to issue a bond, for instance, you're... You are we want to borrow money from investors. And of course, investors are going to look at your ability to pay back what you are borrowing. They're also going to look at the growth profile of that economy. Um, so for fixed income investment, for instance, the credit quality of that issuer is very, very important. The growth rate of, of the country is very important as well. And of course, inflation data is very, very important as well. So what we've seen in the past couple of months, we've seen inflation beginning to trend lower. Um, that's the 18th consecutive downward trend for Nigerian inflation, just above 11%. Um, we expect GDP figures possibly next week. Um, we expect to see about 2% growth rate in, in, in the economy. So in terms of Nigeria, Nigeria seems to be attractive. But like I said, you cannot discount the EM sentiment. That's the emerging market sentiment, which has also created a contagion effect on also Nigerian sovereign as well. So in terms of um, attractiveness, um, Nigeria as a sovereign. So for instance, look at the oil price as well. Investors must always appraise Nigerians' risk in terms of the oil price. So oil production has been very steady. Oil price has been steady as well. So things seem to be look, look good for Nigeria as well. In terms of reserve as well, it's not reserve at 46, um, US dollar per, uh, US 46 billion dollar. Also very, very attractive as well. So you are, you are, you are, you are quite correct, Boston. Um, the GDP figure or the growth rate of an economy is very, very important in terms of how investors appraise the fixed income market. Yeah, this is the first year, Bola uh, uh, since the uh, Treasury refinancing program was announced by the current administration. That was uh, September last year, to be more precise. And we're just stepping into that in the next seven days or thereabout. So what's your take on this one year, how far we've gone? Do you think the youth curve has gone in the right direction? of which we plan it to be when the Ministry of Finance, the Debt Office, and the Central Bank uh, jointly uh, rolled that program out of uh, here. Absolutely. So um, what we had in Nigeria was an inverted yield curve in, in, in the past. And what that means is that the short-dated instrument had a better or a higher yield than longer-dated instrument. Of course, that speaks to maybe a recession or when the economy is not too clear. But the yield curve seems to have normalized. And uh, what we see now is the longer-dated instrument, of course, have a higher yield than the shorter-dated instrument. So in terms of the yield curve, it seems to have normalized a bit. But in terms of the sell-off that we've seen, that is what has caused the um, yield on bonds to have gone up in, in recent times. 
Um, so we expect it to come down a bit more. We begin to see re-entry by investors in the, in the next couple of months. Um, we saw something play out um, yesterday. We expect to see similar um, occurrence as the, day, the, the, the day's approaches. Uh, look at the, what the central bank just rolled out uh, uh, yesterday evening. I'm sure you analysts still are having your head around it this morning. But again, we need to have your first word on that. And I'm sure maybe you heard from the uh, central bank, uh, uh, Emmanuel Lukeje, when we started the show. What's your take on this new corporate bond funding program, which the central bank will be an investor? Public uh, will be investor. Anyone can invest in that. Uh, even though uh, the central bank, Emmanuel Lukeje, says the, the regulator will be a buyer of last resort. What's your take on this? Well, uh, for me, it must be properly managed. There, mu there must be transparency so it's not abused. So it's um, a queue of some sort where you see the federal government buying back um, bonds or corporates, either of itself or for other institutions. So largely, um, they are trying to stimulate growth, trying to give um, growth uh, to, the, to the real sector of the economy, like I said. So the agri sector, the manufacturing sector. So if it is well panned out, if the strategy is well implemented, I think um, growth might be stimulated of some sort. But of course, we must be careful that it's not abused. We must be careful that there is transparency where, where it is concerned. But like I said, it's a quantitative easing of some sort. And really, the, the idea behind it is to spur growth or to ensure that the, the real sector of the economy, which of course accounts for a huge percentage of the labor force or the working population, um, gets um, resources to, to, to move forward. A very last question. Uh, let's uh, spend this. Part of the guideline is that the, any, every issuer of this new corporate bond funding program will have to publish a printed copy of information memorandum, not just online, but in hard copy. That's what the guideline says. But we're yet to see anything in this new guideline saying that the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is the, uh, the, the headmaster for, uh, for corporate bonds, uh, for, for debt markets, yeah. should be part of this. And, and, and the DMO, do you think we should be looking for any information from the central bank regarding what's the role of the DMO, if any, and that of the SEC within the new program? Well, I would expect that the SEC and the DMO should be um, brought in place. Well, if it's a corporate insurance, for instance, maybe not the DMO, um, but the SEC needs to be put in place for they have to approve those offers. And like we've seen with other corporate issues, for instance, they have to go through the SEC to get approval. They have to look at the bond indenture, for instance, the bond covenants. They have to look at these various um, covenants in the bond, um, what the coupon will be, what the pricing is um, at the moment. And um, so I think the SEC is a major part, and um, they need to be put on board. And that's my take. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Bola Hain. Uh, thank you very much for chasing the youth call for us this morning. The head of investment at Cotos Capital, one of the licensed and uh, certified investment bank and securities trading firm on Broad Street.